better stand on a sign that says urgent release. My dear friends, it's really very good to be able to be with you today and in that spirit to be with all the people of Myanmar as they reflect back on what happened 60 years ago. And it's already been explained, but there's one or two things I might add to what to the explanation is already given. One is that the man commissioned by Nguyen to go and shoot the students was called Sein Nguyen. He was at the time in the 4th Burma Rifles, which was the, the, uh, the army group that was there to try to put down the demonstrations and protests. And that, don't forget that this all happened in July. The military takeover itself was in March, so quite a bit of time had gone by. And in that time, uh, the Nguyen and the army found takeover that he did was not unpopular across the country. There were plenty of people in the student movement too who approved of what David had done when he did his takeover because of the state of affairs in the country. But by the time July came around and the political party that David set up to inform, out of the army of course, there was dissatisfaction growing. And so the students, and what they were trying to do in early July was to try to halt this program, this process of the disintegration of constitutional government as they knew it. And that's what Maywin decided to put down. And the man chosen to arrange all that was Sein Nguyen. Sein Nguyen is the same man who took over from Maywin in 1988 when Maywin stepped down as the leader of the Burma Socialist Program Party and the presidency had been to him. Fourth, what happened in 88, St. Louis went down in history as the Butcher of Rangoon. But that title really he owes to what he did on the 7th of March, to the 7th of July, 1962. This day commemorates the beginning and the end of the Nguyen military era. The end, of course, was followed by a very brief period of insurrection, the of, uh, I could say, democratic rule of the sort, with Dr. Mong Mong, uh, the period of St. Winner's president, which lasted only a couple of weeks, and then the takeover by uh, the, the military again under the Sohar and Than Shui, which has brought us to where we are more or less today. The Student Union building, where these things happened on the 7th of March, or 7th of July, as has been described, has not been rebuilt, and there remains a dispute within the university community about what should happen with that building. Should it be rebuilt? Should it be built somewhere else? Should there be some other memorial to the loss of life at that time and the loss of democracy that that all signified? And that remained unresolved by the time the military took over. And it's probably the last thing that someone like Min Aung Hai would think about. Min Aung Hai's record, standing alongside Saint Rin, the butcher of Rangoon, is not a good one either. And I was interested to see Min Aung Hai photographed at the Army Day event that took place recently in Napidor, and I did my best with my not very perfect vision to count the number of medals that Min Aung Hai has awarded to himself. When you get home and see a picture of this man, see if you can count the medals. I could count 25. That's a lot of medals to hang on your chest, even if you're a strong military man like he pretends to be. And I asked a friend of mine in Myanmar, how many of those medals do you think he actually earned? And the answer is from everybody I've spoken to, zero. But if anybody here thinks differently, please let me know. Maybe not publicly. That man is a hollow dictator. Which is one of the reasons why this dictator is perfect what we need to do in the community that is concerned for Myanmar and its progress, and in the case of the Australian Myanmar Institute, with its economic development, social development, and its attainment of its prosperity, the prosperity that we've always enjoyed before, we need to stay together, and we need to stay solid. And I'd like to hope that as the, the calendar moves along, that we get a strong, united approach to the, to the celebration and commemoration of anniversaries, depending on what they are. But for now, what I concentrate on myself is the freedom for all political prisoners. For the end of all death sentences, and not just 
uh, lawful, uh, not just preserving lawful death sentences, in my view, there are no lawful death sentences. Australia has been opposed by international treaty obligations to all death sentences since 1990, and it should remain that way now. But I feel particularly moved when I see people that I know personally, like Coach Jimmy, standing in death row. I really want us to be able to put a strong message forward about this, and I hope the Australian government will do that. The Australian government, changed of course on the 21st of May, is now embarked on a, a huge process of re-evaluating and redesigning the way foreign affairs and international concerns are projected. I'm very happy to see that the Minister, Minister Penny Wong, is committed to, re to uh, pushing the case for Myanmar and democracy strongly. And she's done that with other people in the ASEAN region and elsewhere in the world. And I'd like us to be able to see that succeed. She will need the support of all of us too. So I encourage you all to write to her, send her an email, send it to her office, do whatever you can. Get the message through in sheer numbers that the Australian community, including people of Burmese descent, strongly supports action to bring down this Minot Lying regime and its 25 members. And to do that as soon as can be, this can be arranged. I'd also like to see the next Australian Parliament begin its meetings in Canberra at the end of July, strengthen the work being done by its parliamentary and committee system to investigate the situation in Canberra, to maintain a stronger relationship with can with the CRPH. That's its counterpart in Myanmar, the CRPH. Uh, just as the Australian government to strengthen its relationship with the Indian chief. So those are my thoughts as we come to this anniversary now. But let's keep the rage, keep the pressure, and let's look forward to a peaceful, prosperous, democratic Myanmar. Thank you. Thank you.